Actually, it, it'd probably be funnier. Would, would you do improv <laughs> with a gun to your head? I honestly, I would never do. I did. I did all of the UCB classes. I fucking hate. I hate improv. I'm so bad at it. I did all the the whole 101, 201, 301, 401, and I did advanced Herald. And every single teacher I ever had for improv was like, "It seems like you are more of a stand up comedian." And I was like, "Yep, that's true." <laughs> and they had no idea. I never said it in the class. I just was oh like, "Oh my god." Okay, yeah. I need to ask you, what is a Herald? <laughs> A, her- a herald Lucas. is a a herald is a type of uh it's is a type of improv structure created by UCB okay. that is basically um it's I think it's like three scenes and it's three unconnected scenes and then you do a second beat of those scenes and then you and then heighten it and then you do a third beat of the same scene and then heighten and then you end by trying to bring all the scenes together okay then i think between them you have unconnected group scenes as well yes right? yeah yes and but so it's like three acts with unconnected like little group games is what they're called uh, i in see between the yes. reason why i ask is because i i remember someone asking and getting a very different answer and i was like is there actually like an empirical answer uh, and so I was, I, I was just curious. It's the thing is, I also like went to acting school. I still don't know what viewpoints are. I still don't know. What are viewpoints? I don't know. I have no idea. I you I couldn't know. pay me. Yeah, I think when you were talking about the UCB program you went through, it almost like I was like, what is this? A multi level marketing scheme? Like it sounded like you were paying <laughs> for lectures and then had to yep. recruit people. <laughs> yep. Yep. There go two thousand dollars. Oh. <laughs> Goodness I'm me. with you there though. I took a, I did a lot of improv. I did so Wait, much. Did you improv exclusively at UCB or did you go somewhere else? I was at the pit for a long time. And then right. I was at this other theater called Reckless that closed because the like guru teacher that they had was accused by multiple women of sexual assault. So the whole theater had to close down. He wrote this crazy long like apology and resignation and then he wrote a retraction of his apology and his resignation <laughs> all in like the same Whoa. week it was fucking i was like this is wow. better than improv this is funnier than an improv that's scene. better than an hbo miniseries that's awesome <laughs> and that's all in one week you only get one episode a week typically that's that's packed i like that uh well oh. meerkat cult listeners welcome uh to another episode to we, another new episode, we give you a, a, a fast intro. We don't actually introduce the beginning, but welcome to a new uh, episode, proper introduction. I am Lucas Arnold. And I am Gabby Jordan Brown. And we have a gorgeously talented uh, comedian, a writer, a performer of all sorts. Uh, please give a huge round of applause for the effervescent, I'm using that word again, Gus Constantelis. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Of course, you are very effervescent. I think that is actually a correct usage of that word. Thank you. <laughs> so what you're saying is that our previous guest was not effervescent by any means. <laughs> <laughs> our last guest was Nick Cohen, who's like 6'5 and has this like gruff, deep voice. I was like, I love him, but effervescent? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Slow down, babe. Just... Woodsman? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Pervescent? No. <laughs> uh, this is a correct, that's a correct usage of that word. Oh. Yeah. Th- actually, yes. That's, I, I want to ask, like, do you have, like, do you ever get tired of calling someone, like, beautiful or pretty or attractive? Do you have, like, a word that you prefer that's, like, just a little more zhuzh, a little more unique? For me or for other people? Both. You know, I would honestly love if people would stop calling me, um, what's the word faggot that's the one okay (laughs) (laughs) i'm so kidding um i gotta stop doing that i'm sorry so descriptive (laughs) it it just it fits and that's what hurts you know that's what really hurts is the truth of it all um no honestly what i i really get annoyed when people call me um 
tiny but energetic. I'm just like, say annoying. Just call me annoying. Ooh. Like, don't... Uh, stop being tiny and energetic, though. <laughs> Do you ever get fun sized? That's fun. The worst. Oh. Oh. I get a lot. I just want to put you in my pocket. I want to put you in my pocket. Or You're like, like, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be, be in your pocket. I it sounds sweaty. I don't want it. I've, just... I've seen your fucking apartment. I can only imagine what your par- pocket looks like. You know, I don't. What? Yeah. I don't want to find out what your lint is made of, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't want to sit there with Abe Lincoln on a coin, just be like, hey, what's up? How you doing? Good? I'm good. Well, he was gay, allegedly. Oh, well, yeah, he yes, did. that is true. He liked to sleep, uh, apparently platonically, but it, there were like records of him like sleeping in the same bed with very, very close Platonically, he was taking a nap with his friends. Oh, exactly. It's not real. Had to be gay. But that's what the records say. And we know what's up, really. Well, now I know he was straight because he was just <laughs> napping with his bros. <laughs> like straight <laughs> men do. <laughs> I was trying to think of the last time I spent the night in with a, with a man, which was to, which was genuinely platonic. It was because we had to double up. We went on vacation. Was it and we all had to share. It was anal, was what I was going to say. Um <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, no, we were uh, me and some like theater friends. We um, uh, before like our graduation week, we wanted to get away, just like enjoy each other's company. So we rented this Airbnb. You're explaining this as a straight thing. To do. <laughs> You're like yeah. me and my theater friends <laughs> went to yeah. the Airbnb all yes. together. Yes. This is the story I'm sticking to, and you will find it convincing. <laughs> um, no, yeah, and I had, and I had to, we all had to share beds because there weren't enough beds to go around for all of us, and I shared a. Uh, bed with my buddy Connor and we checked each other we checked each other's bodies uh for um uh not not lice what is it uh ticks that's it oh ticks yeah. yes I'm I'm sure that's why you checked each other's bodies I'm sure yeah. <laughs> that's the word that's the story we both came up with just to, that's hilarious know. I actually did stay in a hotel once with my best friend and I thought like we would platonically cuddle and one time I tried and it didn't work <laughs> Oh, wait what happened oh, oh. I just was like we were just like it was late and we were like chatting and I was like we could cuddle and he was just like what the fuck no and I, was like, I, <laughs> I just met like platonically <laughs> I was like I've known you since you were five give me a break oh no if you've known each other for that long you can cuddle come you, on man oh yeah did you just do the thing you like got into the little spoon position and you were like I'm ready come here <laughs> like literally pretty much yeah oh my god that's what half of being in a relationship is all about it's just like having the other person know when you want to be the little spoon Mm. i'm always a little spoon wait guys have you ever been the big spoon and if so what has it been like how did you how did you take the role i have i have been the big spoon sometimes and it's usually when the guy is like really into short guys being the big spoon that's like Um. usually what it is and honestly it is so fucking uncomfortable because it might be good for them to have like a warm turtle shell on them. But for me, it's like, I am like, my my head is in the middle of your back and <laughs> my, you know, my crotch is like somewhere around your kind of like thigh area. It makes no sense. It really doesn't. There's a I term was... for that. They call it jet packing. Yes, I was that's, about to say. Right, that's what I feel like. I feel like you're jet pack. That's exactly right. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna hope that you were gonna say that this dude was actually like gigantic, and you say, "Yeah, my pelvis is around his lower lumbar region." <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> it's <is> ridiculous. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, Gabby, have you ever been like the the big spoon? Have you ever jetpacked? And how did you like it? I'm often the big spoon. Uh, really? Nowadays, yeah, it's not my it's not my favorite thing to do. We, but we have a. It's like the devil's agreement. We have a silent agreement where like mm. I am the big spoon at night and as a trade-off, I get to be the little spoon in the morning. I see. Very mafia compromise. vibes in this. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, we don't talk about it, but it's there. Gotcha. What about you, Lucas? Have you been a little spoon? I have been a little spoon and I've never, I've never been with someone who is taller than me though. Um, but I've been the little spoon and it feels awesome. It feels amazing. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. I would never do without it. Gus, have oh, yeah. you been with someone who's shorter than you? Ooh, that is a good question. I have, I, you know, I have never been with someone that's shorter than me, but I have been with someone that was around the same height. And so by that, I mean, 
still fucking taller. <laughs> wow. So but how tall are you? Bit, I'm only five foot two. So oh. the guy was like five four, you know what I mean? Or like five three mm-hmm. without shoes. So like very much only that much taller than me. Oh wow. Wait, do you so wait, Gus, can I ask like, do you have an ideal height where you're like, this is too little or that is too much? Do you have a do you have a Goldilocks zone? No, I have no height. People with the height thing, I have, I just don't get it. Like it really yeah. like, yeah. I don't really get a lot of preferences when it comes to dating. Cause it's like such about, it really is so much about the person for me. Like, mm. and when people are like, I don't blame, I, I don't, I don't really find black people attractive. I'm like, that's fucking racist. That's not, yeah. fucking, that's 100%. not a preference, but okay. <laughs> but like, because it really does depend on the person for me. And so height is the same thing preferences are crazy i was i was at summer camp and this girl like was on the bus next to me and she was like can i tell you something gabby which is always like when another jewish girl like wants to tell you something about guys it's always just like something's gonna go wrong and she was like i've never dated an asian guy i've also never dated a black guy i've also never dated a hispanic guy and she just kept listening she's whittling it down a lot (laughs) i mean all lives don't matter according to her like no (laughs) She, so wait, how long did she go before she was just like, just Jewish guys, just Jewish? <laughs> is that how it ended? I think she went to like Native American. And then from there, you can't really keep narrowing down. I mean, you've pretty much wow. heard it all, except for white. <laughs> Native, I, I've I, never heard someone say Native American in terms of like their preferences, positive or negative. I've never come across that. That is so strange. I, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about like, uh, sometimes white people if you look white, they just want to confess racism to you, you mm. know? And it's like, it's just the, it's just the worst thing to do. De- I'm like, why are you dumping this on me? Speaking of which, can I just confess a little something? Just, yeah, just yeah. a little something, a little. <laughs> Speaking of what? <laughs> Speaking of what? No, but I will say something genuine, which is I don't like it if I see couples, regardless of gender, if they look too similar. It bothers me. Oh my God, we and th- have you seen Thank the you. Tumblr that's like gay boyfriend twins? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's I've terrifying. not seen that one, but I was just turned on to, uh, just a couple days ago, you were just, just turned on, on to an Instagram account, it's turned on, very aroused, by an uh, Instagram account called Siblings or Dating. Yeah. It's too much. It's, it's too much. I hate it. <laughs> just say you're a narcissist and let's move on. I can't. Yeah. Oh my God, just- I just found <laughs> Oh, and the worst, honestly, really, can I tell you the worst is when Please. I see guys that I find attractive and then I'll be like, fuck, they look just like me. Oh. Like, I'll be like, that guy's so hot. Or like, there's guys that I've dated where I've been like, oh my God. And then I look back at pictures and I'm like, this is fucking, I'm bad. I'm part of the problem. This is one of the most fascinating parts about like gay dating and gay relationships, just interactions in general, because like I have a friend from college who he like discovered a sexuality in college as so many do but his type is himself essentially and all of us like the rest of us in like our friend group from college we all notice that every single guy he's ever dated looks at least a lot like him and it creeps us out it creeps it's us a all thing. out it's a real thing no i can't that's why no anti-semitism but i don't think i could date a jewish woman because i'd be like we are competition we <laughs> One's fighting to be best at the Miha Moha. I can't date myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I will never do it. That's why I've, da- I've dated a bunch of Slavic women, Latino women, a couple black mm-hmm. women. It's just like, I can't, no one, who, no one who looks like me. I'm like the, I was going to say the anti-narcissist, but that's a narcissistic thing to say. So <laughs> that's not quite right. Yeah. But I'm, is it narcissistic? Because like, I definitely don't want to date someone that looks like me. Um, I, I it just like the idea of like dating some who looks like Lucas. That's fucking awful. Just well, it like, would be I would, so funny if I would also exactly like you. <laughs> I think it would be. I awesome. would also never want to date anyone that looks just like you, Lucas. I'm just Thank kidding. you so much, Gus. <laughs> I'm so kidding. I'm so kidding. Damn. Um, now flirt with me hard. No. No, I think it just was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the hard flirt. Now I'm going to suck you down. 
Uh, um, speaking of speaking of crushes, this is something that I always find interesting. Gus, did you have like, do you remember like something uh, in TV or film that was like your sexual awakening? The first time you ooh, looked at question. someone and you were like, oh, this is awakened something. Richard Gere. Oh, amazing uh, answer. It was in so what? fast. I know. In um so much, but mostly in the movie Unfaithful with um uh, can you, we have to, can I, maybe it's not, is it Unfaithful? I'm pretty sure it's the movie Unfaithful. It's funny because the movie Unfaithful is a movie in which um, Richard Gere plays the husband that the wife is cheating on with this other really hot guy. But the whole time I was like, why Richard Gere is so fucking hot? <laughs> why would you cheat on Richard Gere? He really, he really is hot oh, in yeah. this. I pulled it up. Oh, daddy. He, oh, he does look good. That he really movie, does is just hot overall like that's a sexy fucking movie well to be fair i'm looking at the other guy and like this is that is not an unattractive dude he's that not is... either but like there's this scene in the bathtub with uh with richard gear and it's just oh, oh my god i just remember i watched it the for the first time and like it was like on hbo or something when i was like literally like 11 or 12 years old I was and then ask, yeah when I when I when the movie finished, they did an encore of it, and I stayed up until two a.m. and then just rewatched it to just like jerk off to it more. <laughs> like it was just a whole six-hour night of just me and Richard Gere going at it. But okay, but it wasn't just going at it. It was like going at it. Wait a few hours to the right, right. scene, and oh my god! Yeah. In a way, it was like you were being unfaithful to the other guy because when he came on screen, you were like, "Fuck, get it out of the way!" <laughs> Where's the here? Come on! Oh my! God. Do you think that's when you first like discovered your sexuality, or was it earlier? Was there like a cartoon you were into? I feel like some mm. people like are into cartoons. When no, they're people that people that want to fuck cartoons are fucking crazy. I'm sorry. I'll just say it. My hot take <laughs> is that if you want to, Lucas is going to be like, I want to fuck cartoons <laughs> right now. I swear to God. No, but people that genuinely want to fuck cartoons, like genuinely. I mean, no, I, I know. See, Not genuinely. There's, yeah. car there's cartoons that are hot. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, Goku is hot. Mm -hmm. especially yeah. when he's in super saiyan mode but i don't want to like at the end of the day <laughs> i'm not gonna be like all right let's go you know i'm not fantasizing about goku no what yeah about, no. like in the lion king like simba oh yes and Kinda nala oh, i nala. know that i know for a fact that eddie redmayne the actor he was turned on by nala he thought that nala was did kind he of, tell you <laughs> he he told me when we were in bed together I was trying to spoon him, but he you said were cuddling. no. <laughs> and yes, then, you're cuddling. And then he told me that, no, it was on the Graham Norton show. He talks about this. This is such a crap. His publicist is hilarious. losing his fucking mind, though. His publicist is like, talk about the movies. Why do you talk about this lion all day, bitch? <laughs> and he's like, no, Lion King. Argh. Just like. That's hilarious. Yeah. But yeah, I think I know he has said that about Nala and also Maid Marian from the old school cartoon Robin Hood. He talks about more cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> this is oh, yeah. Eddie Redmayne's hill to die on. This is the this one is thing I know about die. his personal life. Yes. That's so bizarre. <laughs> what you told Absolutely. me right now. But yeah, was that when like the Richard Gere movie, was that when you were like, oh, this is definitely something like I'm probably into guys or. Well, I think it was that, but also like my parents, like I was the youngest in my family. Like I have two mm -hmm. older brothers and my parents, like my mom doesn't speak English. And then my dad was like a cool dad that just like didn't give a fuck. So like we were able to just watch whatever the fuck we wanted to watch. So like we, I was like nine years old putting on like whatever, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. there, but I, there was also Queer as Folk, which was that show on Showtime growing up. Mm. And I would literally watch the sex, just the sex. I've only seen every single sex scene in Queer as Folk. I could not tell you what the story of that show is. I have seen every single sex scene. <laughs> It's amazing. You're okay. Them okay. together as they go with context clues. Yeah, I just like. I well, now, well, now I gotta ask. Based only on the sex scenes, I want you to infer everything that connects them. Give me the whole storyline okay. based on what you know. So there is okay. So there's these two. There's like a group of dudes. <laughs> there's a group of gay dudes. There's two lesbians in it. I think every once in a while they start. Fuck. Yeah, every once in a while they fuck, and I just I fast forward through those scenes too. So I'm Sounds sorry. Sounds like the queer um, comedy scene. <laughs> it's yes, just a bunch of gay right. dudes and two lesbians. <laughs> that's honestly true. That's true. 
and one of them is super hot one of them is a bottom and kind of annoying and they date and they're very on and off again and then there's this other guy that's supposed to be like the samantha of it and it's supposed to be the big slut and he has mm-hmm. like all the best sex scenes and then there's another guy who's i think supposed to be kind of like the miranda and he's like very like I don't do a lot of things but then he just like has like a, I think he gets cancer but I don't know and I mean he might or may not um and I love two- that you derived it from a sex scene you were like yeah. he probably has cancer the way he's I, fucking I think he's cancer is <laughs> yeah. right now yeah I think it's stage three cancer at this point and then the two main guys you can tell them- by the thrust action of what stage <laughs> yeah. it is Yes. And then the two main guys, one of them is the bottom and he's like annoying, but the other guy is like the hot, hot guy in this city and everyone loves him. And there's this club they all go to all the time. But then by the end of the show, he starts being old and they all don't like him anymore. So he's like, I have to settle down. That's the whole thing of the show. That's the whole show. So it's it's ultimately about ageism in the queer community. That's I think essentially what it is. Yes, that's true. And I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and that's wow. what you missed on Glee, okay? <laughs> Were you a Glee? Let's be honest. I was a Glee. I was a Glee for the first two seasons and then the third season I gave up after Leah Michelle was like, I have to lose my virginity if I want to play Maria in West Side Story. And I was like, what? She's like, I need to feel closer to the character. And I was like, she's Puerto Rican. Oh, You're white. Method You're actors. never. You're never going to be Maria. You're never going to know what it's like to be poor in New York and like a different race because you're white. Like, sorry, Leah Michelle, getting pregnant is not, or losing your virginity is not going to make you feel closer to Maria from West Side Story at all. You know that she actually like wanted, Leah Michelle herself wanted to be Maria in West Side Story. So that was like a true plot line <laughs> they took I know. from that. I know. Or did, they, or the did she just improv is... it and it was written in? No, she really wanted just... to be Maria in West okay. Side. Like she I've never seen Glee. Did. I don't know why I'm- <laughs> It is that, the racial insensitivity of that storyline for me was so terrible, followed by the fact that like the, the, the two gay characters are being annoying at the time. I was like, I quit. But I watched the finale and I cried so hard. Oh. I cried so hard, Gabby. I cried so hard. I told everybody about it. I never saw the finale. I stopped after season three as well, probably around the virginity plotline. And then my sister and I picked up a random episode, like episode or like season five or something, like not knowing any context. Blaine and Sam were friends. Like there was just all this weird stuff going on. They were in New York. Like, yeah, it was so confusing but I do want to watch the finale because I always had a huge crush bless her heart R.I.P. on Naya Rivera the the finale sidebar the finale really focuses on the core main characters and kind of ignores all the new characters they introduced in season three four and five so (laughs) and six and so I do like as someone that hadn't watched the show for three seasons I was like this is the perfect ending for me (laughs) yes (laughs) That sounds great because it sounds like they really shoehorned in some of those new characters. Okay, uh, Augusta, here, they have Glee product. Oh, sorry. Sorry, say say that again. Oh, they had the Glee project going on, so they had to shoehorn all the winners of that show into the show into Glee. Oh right, I remember that they like. You're cutting in and out a little bit, but I heard the last thing you said, which is about the the Glee project, right? How they had to like shoehorn all those people in. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm cutting out. Am I cutting out? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. Okay. We get to look at your beautiful face though, so it's worthwhile. I'm closing tabs, so it's not taking up too much of my, um, maybe Ah. I'll stop the video too. Okie dokie. Okay, Uh, there's the headshot again. Oh, is this better? Just, I mean, your headshot is a, is a fine placeholder. It's just, it's just nice to look at you. Okay, great. Yeah, there okay. you are again. There you go. All okay, good, good in the hood. Yeah. Um, I, I hate totally... when they do that. Go on, Lucas. No, sorry. I was, I no, uh, no, please go on. No, I have nothing to add. I had nothing to add other than I hate when they do like a reality show competition. And the, I remember they did that for Greece, where like they auditioned a bunch of people to play Danny and um, 
I was going to say <gasps> Danny and this. Sammy. I remember this. I remember <laughs> it's just buried in the deep recesses of my brain. They just auditioned all these people to be in the revival of Greece. And the two people they chose like kind of sucked. And then they got to be on Broadway eight nights a week because of some reality show. The yeah, 2000s were a lawless time. We, we, it was lawless. And let me tell you, I was watching RuPaul's Drag Race yesterday and they keep talking about COVID and because they filmed it during COVID. Right. And I turned to my boyfriend, I was like, can you imagine like 50 or 60 years from now, people are probably going to be watching like old TV shows and be like, they really shot all these TV shows while a fucking pandemic was going on and people were dying. Like, <laughs> like we are really honestly going to sound so stupid in like 30, 40 years. I just want to oh let everybody God. know. Oh my well, God, you're so right. We're going to be like, we let these people do drag. There's a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Stay uh, home. Here's we're the worst. Shitty reality competition. <laughs> the here's the, here's the worst thinking? thing though. This is me playing devil's advocate in RuPaul's Drag Race. Classic, the straight guy comes on here. He plays devil's advocate. Classic. I was given a special license when I was born for it. They just knew. But but seriously, in RuPaul's Drag Race, there isn't that much physical contact. I have not seen the most recent season that was filmed during COVID, but a lot of it is them like uh, alone at their desks, putting together their outfits and planning stuff out. And the performances can... In my mind, it's something that would be natural to like space out a little more physically. No, absolutely. I, I, RuPaul's Drag Race being one example, but like, sh- yeah. and sure. But I'm talking mostly about like the Law and Order SVUs going oh, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Grey's Anatomy still shooting, where there's like group scenes and like people obviously, like obviously big camera crews involved where people were probably interlapping. People exactly. are really going to be like, these people were so stupid. No wonder all these yeah. people died. The batch, oh, if, yeah, they, it was Darwin, yeah. honestly, survival. Yeah. As, if, as if you couldn't get through everything you haven't watched on Netflix during the pandemic. Right, well, and my friend, were, my friend doesn't work at Netflix, but knows people that work at Netflix. And in the very beginning of the pandemic, around April or May, he was like, Netflix isn't even worried. Netflix has enough content shot and f- finished, ready to go to get them until the end of 2021 without shooting anything new. So they're like, fuck it, we don't care. I believe yeah. that I believe that Netflix is a factory. Yeah. I feel like I met a Netflix producer once who like I was like working with her. I used to work in virtual reality, which is like a weird other life I've lived. And like she like came to visit our installation for one day and she was like, I've got a flight in three hours. I have four other projects I'm working on. And I was like, How do you sleep? What do you yeah. eat? Oh my it's god. Insane. I have a part-time job now. I feel like I'm drowning. <laughs> it's insane. Insane. And it's because they really changed the model of how they make television. You know what I mean? Like it's it's very untraditional. And I mean, probably much it's much more cost efficient and smarter for them. Mm-hmm. But like the show I work for, they're instead of doing it like season by season by season, they picked it up for the whole series. So we as writers, we just get to write the whole show in in us in the year it's time. So for us, it's like temporary gigs, but for them, they're saving so much money on the back end. Oh, that's fantastic. So you're a, a, you're like uh, working on writing the content of the show, like in a room? Yeah, yeah talk a little bit about it. Yeah, what I is write that like? For, I write for a show I can't name because it hasn't okay. been announced yet, but it's going to be okay. on Netflix. And um, it's super cute. It's a kid show. And it's the age range is like six to nine, which is a great age range. And it's super cool. I mean, I write episodes. And so what we do is we have summits in animation and because the episodes are evergreen um, and you don't really have to like follow a storyline, mm-hmm. you can, you know, we have summits, we pitch our episodes out, we meet and we just flesh out all those ideas all together as writers. And then individually we get assigned episodes. Then we do story breaks with the executive producer and the story editor. And that's when we like really flesh out exactly what goes on in the episode. And then I go off, I write the outline, I get notes on the outline, I go off, I write the script, I get notes on the script, and then I send it back one more time, and then I'm done. And then that's my involvement on it. And I get around, it depends on the show, but in this show specifically, I'm getting like nine or 10 episodes, which is great. That is so cool. Is this your first um, experience like in a writer's room? Have you done it a bunch before? No, I've worked in writer's rooms before. I worked on a show called The Lion Guard and I worked on a couple of Nickelodeon shows. And I also wrote an episode for the new Rugrats reboot. So I'm so (gasps) excited about that. There's a reboot? 
there's a Rugrats reboot, and I'm so excited about. It. They just announced it, and I'm honestly so excited about it. I'm so excited are there about new it as well. Babies? I heard that there are fewer. That there's it's not. They haven't. They're 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 not introducing some of the characters yet. So Dill and Kimmy are not introduced yet. Okay. Okay. But Susie is a a, a part of the regular cast in nice. the first oh, season this time around, good. and it's really good. I can't say anything about it. Yeah. But it's really. Okay. I think what they did with it was really smart. Instead of trying to make it much more complicated than they needed to, they actually just brought it into the today's world and they were like this is Rugrats in 2020 and I think that's really smart of them and that's really good honestly the first day I sat down and wrote like Angelica I was like this is fucking weird it was weird. wow that is so crazy to get into her mind because I feel like oh you know I hated her as a kid because I feel like you're she's written but you for love you. hating her that's the, yeah you love it well now I think she's iconic I'm yeah. like she could call anyone the f-slur <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. i'd come out to her <laughs> that I was an iconic <laughs> i smoke a blunt with angelica yeah oh yeah no, i'm kidding <laughs> oh 100 well to i'm gonna be honest like phil and lil i think they would be i think they were like the closest to like the stoners of the of the original cast yeah and i, I would do like, shrooms with mom. them oh my mm. god yes <laughs> and her beard like jewy husband <laughs> <laughs> but can i ask like uh, so are there any shows that you watched as a kid that you desperately think d- deserve a reboot mm. or things that you miss? I, um, honestly, the thing is with that question is that it will probably become a reboot soon. You know, right. I, okay. I just think, I, but I would love to see a reboot of, I probably would watch a reboot of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, to be honest. Like, yes, I, I think that it's maybe too soon, but I think it'd be like really fun. I don't know. I don't know. I think Fairly Odd Parents would be a great one. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And Definitely. I mean, they're doing new Hey Arnold stuff, and I did watch it, and it's pretty good. I did not know that. That was my favorite fucking show. They I did a movie. So they did a movie. Oh, a I love the movie. Yeah. The movie was yeah. so good. I loved I it. I think so it much. was supposed to start a reboot after it, but I don't know what happened. Oh. oh. Yeah. It was supposed to oh, launch a reboot, but maybe it just didn't. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I never I never saw the movie. Was it like did they change up any of the characters or was it basically the they, same? They they pick up basically where the show left off and it basically and it addresses I don't want to give it away because it was emotional and I cried while watching it. I'll admit it I cried and I've me and too. I, I <laughs> But so there's much. a double gay wedding at the end. Yes. <laughs> Anna and Brittany and <laughs> Kurt and Blake and Arnold and Gerald they everyone gets yeah um no but it's it's Arnold on the search for his parents that is the movie and I don't want to say anything more because you just you need to watch it and you will cry you will need to you will need to cuddle with someone to get through it it's it's really well done and I honestly am so happy that I got that closure in my life me too yeah 100 percent I don't know what you guys think about this, but I think people shit on reboots too much because, um, you know, it's like, oh, there's no original content anymore. But there's a there's a part of me that's like, if art is good enough, it needs uh, another deep dive, like, an- yeah. like someone to take another look into it. I don't know if you guys agree. As long as something original is done with it, something new, something that where you, or there's a new crevice that you want to open up and see and explore more. It has, it, yeah. It, and if that isn't there, and the thing is, like, it's so often that reboots are just done as like just a money grab, and mm-hmm. that it's so easy to do it badly, and that's where I think a lot of people are jaded because of it. Right. But I, I also feel the same way. Where I'm like, I wish I could say stop doing reboots, but every once in a while, there's some that are so good that you're like, I mean, like Cobra <laughs> Kai, for example, where it's like so incredible that I'm like I mean just keep doing it for I I don't even think that the karate kid is as good as Cobra Kai anymore like that's where I'm at with Cobra Kai I think Cobra Kai is the thing keeping America together honestly I really do (laughs) I mean it's great and but there's a few other ones that I've just felt like were amazing that I'm like I mean if you again if you do it right you do it right and it's really about the characters because it's Mm -hmm. not no one cares that no one cares that you're telling the same story like the mistake a lot of people make is always to like make a rom-com a sequel and it's like it doesn't work because it's a rom-com 
Like you mm-hmm. can't make a, a sequel of a rom-com like Coming to America, for example. That's a rom-com at the end of the day. Yeah, and yeah. sure. Making a sequel of that is like, well, you can't make it the same genre. So this needs to be a different genre. So if you make the same movie, you're just doing a disservice to yourself. Can I actually give one that I think there's a sequel that I don't think it's an extraordinary sequel, but I think it's a solid sequel is I really liked my Big Fat Greek Wedding too. I never saw it. I liked it too. I thought it was cute. I thought it It was was really sweet. It was just like, these are wacky characters. Let's put them in stupid situations. Goodbye. You know, I thought it was cute. As a Greek person, do you think that those movies are accurate to the experience of being Greek? Oh yeah, I think they are. I think they're, I think they're accurate to the experience of being a Greek immigrant outside Mm -hmm. of Greece, not as a Greek person. Cause that's like a lot of Greek people in Greece were like really pissed about it. Cause they were like, we're nothing like this, but it's very much like Greek immigrants in America. Right. Right. Yeah. I think always like I watched Shiva baby recently and I thought it was so accurate to the experience of being Jewish, but obviously there's so no one is a monolith. So there's obviously yeah. a lot of people who are going to be like, wait, well, that's not my experience. I'm like, it's one right. movie. <laughs> it right. cannot encapsulate the whole thing, you know? Right. Wait, right. Gus, I, I, I do have a small question. Was there, do you know of anyone that like saw my Big Fat Greek Wedding, the original one, and then went to Greece expecting like people to be like in the movie? Is that, and did people, is that the thing that happened? Because like when I watched it, I thought, oh yeah, these are Greek Americans. I didn't think like, oh, that's what, people in Greece are like I well I'm sure that people I'm sure that plenty of Americans went to Greece and they were like Windex (laughs) we don't like all the Greeks are probably like we just don't have that here that does not exist in this country (laughs) yeah enjoy the beach (laughs) stop throwing Windex at us you're in a beautiful beach do you want souvlaki just go over there what are you doing yeah you can get souvlaki. <laughs> that is a thing. You can still just get it. <laughs> yeah, you can get it anywhere. That is a great movie. That's one of my favorite movies. Oh, yeah. So rewatchable. I yeah. have the VHS and the DVD. I'm not going <laughs> to yes. Do you have any other, like, uh, movies that... Are there any other, like, really good Greek movies that people don't know about? Or, like, movies about being Greek, a Greek-American or Greek immigrant? But only made by Nia Vardalos. Only made by her. <laughs> just Fucking... <laughs> No, that's the thing. The answer is so hard. No, like there's such little content in America for like that. It's just insane to me. Mm. Like, yeah, I guess I I guess I would say that that's why people really enjoy like a lot because I have a lot of Greek followers and Greek American followers on my Instagram Mm -hmm. and TikTok. And so that's why people really enjoy my content because they're like, there's nothing on TV for me and there's no movies about me and there's no actors that are like are very you know vocal about being greek like john stamos is unfortunately like other than doing a yogurt commercial isn't very vocal about being greek you know Mm. and so and i love him to death but you know it is what it is and that's just the truth of it and so i think that like but i also think that's true of like a lot of immigrant um cultures like for some reason like americans don't realize like how big immigrants uh cultures are in America and they very much discount it as like being something that could be very I guess profitable from a business standpoint like Mm, you have you have so many different cultures and like a lot of immigrant cultures have so many similarities like I get so many I have so many followers that are just like Arabic or Jewish that are like this is funny because my parents are like that or Polish and like I like that too like my mom is just like that and like America and then people tell me they're like oh you have such a niche brand and it's like Uh immigrant Sorry, but like immigrant is not a niche brand. And like, you have to yeah. stop treating it like it is. Murky little thing <laughs> you're doing. Yeah, like <laughs> being, a, being a first generation immigrant American in America is not a niche thing. Like so many people have that experience. And like, I think like once like TV networks pick up on that, then we'll start like seeing like really much better fucking funny content. Gus, what's it like being the first ever child of immigrants? What's it like? Can you talk like, about- <laughs> you're a fucking pioneer it's so untapped so weird I'm like yeah Yeah, and comments like that all the time and I'm like you're dumb yeah (laughs) but I think also people act like it's like very stereotypical or something it's like this is how it is like this is how it actually is I love your videos by the way and I I love them so much they are so highly specific and I always think the more specific to one person's experience something is, 
the more it taps into everyone's experience. It's this oh, yeah. weird paradox. You can find a universe in the smallest details and that's exactly where you need to go. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Guys. My, yeah. my, I, I love like, uh, the, when you put on your wig and you go like I agree but no 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 guide and the, like and going through <laughs> all of the that is my and then you like break it and say in other words it kills me every single time and especially when you ask other people to pronounce like uh Greek names and Greek terms that also always kills me because you can see like the defeat in their eyes as they're like I really want to say this right it's it's so it's, it's fun it's so fun oh it's I love fun. it I love so much those. Do you have a favorite oh. like audience interaction you've gotten like a comment that's really like been important for you to see or like someone who really oh, loves your videos good. you've connected with or something? Um, like well, Lucas, I'm sure you, I'm sure you, and you too, Gabby, I'm sure you guys have gotten comments from people making content. Lucas, like, I'm just saying Lucas, because Lucas has 2 million followers on TikTok and I'm sure. You, you are not offending me. I don't care. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just, yeah. So I meant no offense by it, but you know what I mean? Um, and you get comments, but it's really the comments from people that are like, I am, um, I'm like 17 and I'm gay and I don't know how to come out to my family. And they're very conservative Greek. And I just, cause like a lot of Greek people are super conservative. Mm -hmm. And, and so they're like, I have no idea what to do. Or they identify as like non-binary and they're like, your videos have really helped me like come to terms with my like identity. And like, it's good to see someone that is like, not the traditional like macho Greek dude doing the same fucking thing over and over again. And so like, that is great. Cause I'm like, okay, well I'm adding something new to this. And I'm, I'm like trying to like break a barrier for a lot of people in the community. And like, while it might be a small community it does affect a lot of people, you know at the end of the day. So like, those are the comments that I think are really great. Yeah. No, that's really beautiful. Yeah, something you can, you and I can relate on as big time uh, uh, creators online. Gabby, to step aside. Um, <laughs> I did have yeah. a tweet go viral and kids called me mommy in my mentions. So, Whoa. <laughs> so I know what it's like <laughs> with my 1,000 followers. Oh my I was, God. I'm so kidding. I feel so bad. It's really <laughs> fine. I don't care. No, all I was going to say is that I have occasionally gotten like uh, the occasional comment or like a direct message saying like you've really helped me through or you talked about something that was really meaningful and that it makes it means the world. And the rare times I've talked about like my background or be, or having like my mom from the Sudan, it's like I do occasionally get like people going, oh, I, I, I almost see no one who like talks about being Sudanese or is Sudanese like people don't know where the country is. They think that it's like a state and that Africa is a country. That is something that bugs me a lot is when people it's don't like realize New it's a continent. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love like we did an episode about um, the Meghan Markle interview um, mm. and like her experience with the royal family and Lucas got to really open up about like what it's like being of a similar racial background and like how it's just an interesting experience. And I think that probably impacted a lot of people. And it was really cool that we got to do that, you know, on the podcast for people to, you know, be listening to somehow find our podcast and just be like, yeah. oh yeah, that is my experience. Like it's just, yeah. hopefully people right. find connection in the craziest corners. Gus, did you have any opinions on the uh, Harry and Meghan interview? Did you see it or not? <laughs> You know, I have to tell you, I don't know a single fucking thing about the royal That's family. Okay. I it's but I watched that interview. Mm. <laughs> no context. Because Just yeah. was raw dogging it. <laughs> Literally, I raw dogged it. No context. You're right, Gabby. I did not. I did not know a single thing going in. I was like, oh, Meghan Markle from Suits, right? Yeah. My boyfriend is very involved in that world. And he's like, I'm watching this interview. If you want to watch it, watch it. So I sat down. I was like, fine. He was like, come on, just watch. It's a big deal. And I was like, is it? Do people care about this? I had no, I really just had no idea. Because I'm like, we're in America. Why do people care about this fucking family so much? What are we doing here? Yeah. Americans independent. 76, baby. Just baby. But Americans are so self-centered, except for the royal family. Like you could be like a you could be like a whole country in a different part of the world just fell underground and everyone is dead and americans would be like i don't fucking care ah, spring break <laughs> but like the but prince philip dies and i have to stop doing everything i'm fucking doing that day it's unbelievable but oh my, um, God. my thoughts on the interview were you're really surprised that a white rich family is racist really like yeah how is anybody surprised everyone was 
like, oh, Oprah was like, oh. And I'm like, oh, the rich white family is racist again? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was saying. People were like, who said the racist thing? Was it Charles? I was like, are you kidding me? It was oh, all of them. <laughs> it was all of them. They were in a room and they all nodded and agreed. <laughs> and <laughs> also- Maybe the queen, maybe the queen. I'll give it to her, you know? That's yeah. it. I will say though, on the podcast, I said my guess, my guess was that it was Charles because like Harry said that he wasn't talking to his dad anymore, but he's still talking with like his grandmother, the queen, and he's still talking to his, but like he is afraid relationship with his dad. And I thought, oh, it might've been him, but he just doesn't want to say it outright. Um, but then the thing is like, I kind of defended Will. Like I like Prince William. I think he's a nice dude, but then like he posted online, just like him with a black friend. And I was just like, oh my God. Ah, I was like, oh. any guesses on who the black friend was? <laughs> Did he get just like the most random, like, oh my God, he doesn't even know. He hired him for a day. Yeah. <laughs> like one of those, uh, remember like at Trump rallies, they would get like one black guy to stand in the front. <laughs> yeah. With the and then Donald Trump points him out. He's like, oh, look, I love the, I love the blacks. I love my black fans and my voters love you. <laughs> he's <laughs> makes a big deal out of it. Fucking oh. mess. I would love to be like a paid actor for something terrible. I was talking to a- I hung Just a diversity with, hire. Just I, <laughs> I hung out with Dan Frank in the park today. We were talking about like closeted actors and we were, I was like, you know what? If I was a gay guy, like I would have fucked John Travolta because I want that hush money. Like I want like a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> to go away. <laughs> That is, they get so much money. My friend has slept with one of the closeted actors and has Ooh. an NDA okay, and okay. they make money. They do. Oh, that's my God. nice. I mean, it's not six good figures, good. but it, it's like, it's like 50 K or something, you know? Is oh. it, was it one time deal or was it like a subscription? <laughs> that's how I think. No, I think this was a, I, a subscription. I think this was a one time deal with this actor. Okay. And then they told me about it and they were like, oh yeah, I had to sign an NDA. It was like a whole thing. Still, that's not. But could bad. you imagine, like, imagine just coming and then all of a sudden, like, paperwork lands on your lap? Like, oh what? My God. I, like, I who gives you the paperwork? Surely it's not the actor. It's like an assistant comes out from the woodwork. Right. Like, it's the left testicle. It's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It comes out of the left testicle, Lucas. No, it was just, it was just like, grab, just like, mm, here you go, just. <laughs> Like By that. the way, I've been hiding this paper in my sack the whole time <laughs> if you want to sign it. Oh my God. The cops are trying to catch us talking about this. Oh my God. Oh, the police are on their way. <laughs> I, I heard the noise. That's Quick, tell us who it is. No, we won't ask him. No, 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 no. no. Um, God, that's so funny though. Yeah. Oh, I can say who it is. But uh, cut that out too. But, Obvious. You know, oh, yeah, obviously. yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, yeah, that's amazing. Oh there we yeah, go. that's what I was saying. No, there is so many gay closeted actors in Hollywood, and you'd think like they'd come out by now, but no, it's just a thing. I oh remember a while God. ago there was a Reddit post that was like, no one knew if it was real, real or not, but it kind of seemed real. Where this guy was like, I am an American film actor, like I am almost married to a woman who I've been with for a very long time and I'm in the closet because my agent said like gays don't make it in Hollywood which seems oh, wow. not true to me like but I mean I guess there... if you're like a film actor like middle America wants to feel like they can fuck you oh yeah. that makes sense yeah it depends on what sense. you want to do really it, like it, it, that's the if you want to be an action star like you have to just be straight yeah like are Neil there any gay action stars i actually don't know like real proper like action just, i feel I, like, like not action stars i feel like maybe matt bomer has been in a couple of action movies um I, yeah but in terms of stars i mean it's just a hard it, yeah it's a hard thing also gus you were saying like you get all these details in la i feel like it is funny to like be in the industry at all and just hear about which celebrities you grew up idolizing were like assholes to your friend who's a waiter or oh something like I that know. is oh a classic God. like new york la experience right so disappointing it's a, i know I, I, every, but years but everyone has an ellen story you know what i mean so like oh, everyone yes. was talking about i was I, I did the wb tour and the fucking tour guide was like ellen's a con like they <laughs> <not>. <laughs> just like she sucks her bodyguard doesn't let her talk to her like she's the worst oh my god i oh actually my i have a story of someone who uh, is an asshole who i'll tell you the name but i will also bleep it out 
Um, it was, and I can confirm, he is a dog shit human. Okay, so let me tell you what happened. Okay, so love, we should just call this episode off the record and just off keep the yeah away. <laughs> Off the record, yeah, that's the name. That's the name now. Um, I'm gonna get so many DMs from like people being like, "Who are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, okay. So this is what happened. So I was working at an art exhibit uh, in 2019, and I was only there for like a month and a half. But on the great opening, all right, so big opening night, big big VIP event, and uh, one of the shifts I had was I was to check names at the door. I had a list. You would, uh, Gus, you would come up and I would go, uh, yeah, what's your name? Gus Constantelis. Oh, cool. Yes, you're a VIP. Here's your VIP bracelet. Put it on, enjoy the art. And for uh, the rest of the events, just show your bracelet and you'll be let in. And you would say, thank you. And then you'd go inside and enjoy the exhibit. And that's what everyone did, except this guy who I will not mention, but I mentioned to you guys. Um, he came up to me and he just did this. He just came up to me and he went, he just put his wrist and I was like, do I have to put the bracelet on for you? He and said, I kiss the ring. Just, I might as well. If he did, I probably might have. Um, but, but probably would have done it. No, I know pre-COVID times I would have kissed. Yeah, I would, ring. I, my anxiety, who knows what would happen? Just like, oh, uh, but, um, but yeah. And so I took out the bracelet and I put it, I stretched it open and put it on his wrist. And then he, and all the while he didn't look at me, didn't look at me once. And then he just went inside without saying thank you. Just. That is so wow. crazy. I went to this one girl's house when I was like 13 and we had a sleepover and she had posters of him all over the wall. I thought it was the most alarming thing I'd ever seen in my life. I, I know like people have wow. teen crushes or whatever, but I was like, you are a psychopath. There's not an inch of your room that isn't covered in this man's face. Oof. Honestly, a good rule of thumb with people is that if, if they fizzle out somewhere along their career and not because at like the peak of their career, it's because they're an asshole. Like if, mm. or if, or if they have like a couple of really good movies and then all of a sudden start doing really shitty movies, it's because they're an asshole. I did a class with a director who told me the exact same thing about an actress. Um, who I honestly don't remember her name, but he, but he basically described that she was awful to get along with. And that's the reason why she basically hasn't done anything for the past like 15 years or so. And yeah. I was like, oh, that Cause makes it so feels like at the end of the day and it's true in comedy as well that like things are very like, what have you done for me lately? But that also works to the advantage of like filtering out really mean people because at some point, like if you're an asshole and you're at the peak of your career people are gonna put up with you. But once you've had a few years and people know who you are, they're going to be like, the cost of having this person is so high that I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I hope that COVID honestly makes people realize that they don't have to put up with this shit anymore. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, there's so many things post COVID that I'm just like never doing again. But I'm like, like I, that what? Was, like host. If I have to host an 11 o'clock show, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not hosting mm -hmm. a late night show at 11 o'clock until 1 a.m. And then going yeah. home, having to take an Uber, taking basically getting paid $25 and then having to pay for a $32 Uber. Yeah, home. Oh <laughs> my God. Negative $7 out for the night. So I can host a late night show to six people from fucking oh, yeah. Idaho who don't even laugh at me. I hate this. No, I'm not doing that. Especially because we don't know when the subway is going to resume normal hours again. Cause right now it's closed from like two to 5 a.m. for like cleaning and stuff. And yeah, you're so right. I've, I've decided yeah, I'm not doing reckoning, but like with uh with like eight or seven person bringers, I feel like that for listeners who don't know, a bringer show is like, you have to bring your friends to watch you do comedy and they all have to spend like $40 on you. So sometimes you have to oh, pay yeah. them to come. And it's like one of the only ways you can get a really good tape of your comedy if you're starting out early, but it's also like something that you do because it's like a show is a show at first. I just can't imagine myself bringing eight people anywhere. I can't imagine yeah, myself no. interacting with eight people. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine eight people. I can't. <laughs> I, uh, what? <laughs> what are people? <laughs> There's more than four? Just yeah. No, I, I also like, I did like, a couple of bringer shows last year, actually, like before the pandemic. And I don't regret them. I definitely don't regret them, but I definitely couldn't do another one. That's just, it's just, no, I'm past it. Yes, I, I definitely feel like 
I, and I'm doing this with my friend, I'm, I'm making a list of the things I'm not doing anymore post pandemic that I don't want to put up with. And I think That's everyone really should do that because it'll help you be accountable to yourself and also be like, yes, I don't need to do that. What are you doing? And one of those things is hosting late night. The other thing is not calling someone out just because they're in a position of power over you. Ooh, Ooh. nice. Because I've called so many people out this year and on <laughs> Facebook, and I'm like, I don't give a fuck anymore. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, huh? What are you going <laughs> to do, huh? And at some point, everyone realizes that the power people wield is very finite. Like, mm-hmm. Especially the, in comedy. Especially yeah. in, oh my God, yeah, two minutes in, it's like, you could be, it feels like a, a microcosm of like an improv class. Like if you have like the funniest scene in an improv class that day, you can't be talking about it three months later. <laughs> you can't be like, oh, remember no. that scene where I was the quirky janitor? It's like, shut up, <laughs> do something else. <laughs> well, that's a beautiful thing I think that's happened with COVID is that a lot of the gatekeepers have had power, uh, just it's taken away from them and, mm-hmm. and everything has been a lot of it has been given back into the hands of comedians. And that's why so many comedians are like hosting more shows and producing more stuff on their own in a way right. that's very self-sufficient. Right. Um, like I've learned that like, the, I've really learned that like comedy club bookers aren't really that important. Like, I'm sorry, but like Lucas, especially with you, those comedy clubs need you more than you need right. them right now. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so. what, if I were you, I would just be like, listen, can I have your can I have your club on a Saturday? I'll sell it out. Do you want to make money or fucking not? You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's what I would do. Well, that's people don't. That's one of the best things. Yeah, no, it's one of the best things about like this past year and like TikTok for me is I've gotten in contact with like other comedians uh, just across the country who also have like big followings and we and like we haven't decided on anything like set in stone yet, but we've been talking about like you know like booking some good dates together and like using our followings to like advertise and do stuff just on our own. Right. Right. It's fucking awesome. And that's so smart because, and that's the thing is comedy clubs, what are you, what are they going to say? Nothing. And yeah. the, if, and the, oh, do you not want to like, make money? Just like, <laughs> right. And the other thing, no, I'm I hate that, money. <laughs> yeah. I hate money. I hate, I hate a sold out room. I want, yeah. Eh, eh. I need, I want people that I think are funny. And it's like, no, you fucking, it doesn't I matter. want five guys from Staten Island watching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if they don't yell at a woman to take her shirt off, I will not throw this show. <laughs> yeah, it's, and those bookers are so old and outdated at this point. I'm like, oh my God, I know. You don't even know what's happening right now. And these people yeah. uh, that you don't even book at your club are on, going on the internet and getting more <laughs> followers and, and making more money than you've ever seen in your life. So you, it's, ever, yeah. you ever see a booker go up? Oh, I mean, there is, I have I'm, not not gonna, I'm not going to name names again off the record as the title of this episode is going to mm-hmm. be, but there's an, the, the, the owners of a very big club in New York City are like failed comedians pretty much. And they go up and it's like, you basically bought a club because you just couldn't make it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. unfortunately. It's like watching the PE teacher like try and run. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Man, just take a donut and leave. Like, let the live little kids do this. Just oh. chaperone the junior school, the junior high school prom and take your L. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go stop kids from grinding. Come on, do what they, do the only thing you're good for. <laughs> oh my God. That is such a good analogy. Yeah, I agree. I would hope hilarious. That we, I hope that we would gain some knowledge from COVID. Obviously, it probably won't happen. None of us will ever learn anything, like, as a society and a culture. But you would think that at least, like, some of the inequalities that have come to light will eventually be addressed. And then also just in, like, personal things, like, you know, you'll stop hanging. You'd think that, like, a person would stop hanging out with, like, toxic people during COVID. Because it's like, I just want to see the people I love at this point. I just want to see people right. who feel good. Right. And, in, and in a very small way, something I was talking about with um, uh, uh, with our friend Maxim Allen was that something that we all that we over time notice, especially just at open mics, um, like distanced open mics outdoors uh, during the summer last year, was that there weren't as many like crazies that like sometimes would just stumble upon an open mic because it was kind of more word of mouth. So you could filter out the people that you just didn't like or, you know, that just didn't come up with good stuff consistently. Right. Right. Something important I've learned this year is that like, if you have someone in your life that is not happy for you, when something good happens to you, get them the fuck out of your life, get them out of your life. 
Yeah. If you have people who treat you like competition, I filtered oh my all God. That shit out. Oh my God. The Imagine I was sitting there like, you know what, Gus? I am upset that you mentioned Lucas's amazing TikTok following. <laughs> Not <laughs> that guy. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but it's like compare and despair. Compare and despair. Like mm-hmm. Lucas, like I Lucas and I met at open mics and I was like, oh, he's funny. I like, I like that you hit you had that very interesting voice. And I was like, that is cool. And then you just blew up and I was like, great. That's so cool. Yes. That is amazing. I was like nothing but happy for you, and I was other like, people's is- success is not your failure. I was, like, yeah. I was like great because that dude knows me, and we're friends. And like, not saying that he's ever gonna help me, but I'm so glad that I could be friends with someone that is successful in that way. I don't want people in my life that are gonna be fucking nobodies and not successful. Mm-hmm. I want people in my life that are successful and working hard, and like also like have the same ambition as me, and like have the same like drive as me, and like are funny. Like that's what I want, and that's we're what everyone d- should want. Yes. So don't ever compare. And that's like the thing is another thing is like, don't ever fucking compare yourself mm-hmm. ever, especially 100%. as a queer person mm-hmm. in the community, because it's so easy as a queer person to fall into the habit of like, oh my God, there's another queer person making it. I now feel like I can't make it. That's not true. Mm-hmm. If that happens, it just opens up space for everybody else. Yes. Mm. And I also think you're defined by the company you keep. Like, if yes. You're, if you're out there like talking shit about the person you run a show with or something, it's like, what does that say about you? You know, like I love, I'm all about like no drama 2021, just like pure, smooth, like mm, just so good. Yeah. I can't imagine Lucas starting a fight. It'd be so funny if we had a fight. <laughs> it's it's a funny thing. Like I met uh, just like a day or two ago, I was meeting up with a, a TikTok friend and we, um, she she had parked her car and like we'd went to get some some smoothies and when we came back she was getting a ticket from a police officer and like she was very confrontational in a way that I absolutely wouldn't be like I would have been like oh I'm so sorry I parked there I'll, I'll pay the fee I'm sorry and then she and, but she was like no I, I no I I can just move my car what what what's the issue and it was like it was really funny to watch because like just at how different our personalities and our tendencies were. Cause I was like, Oh, that's not me. I would never start. <laughs> yeah, I would shit. never do that. That's so not me. Um, but Gus, one small thing before we get into some listener submissions, something yes. I wanted to ask you is, um, is that with like the growth you've had on social media, especially recently, have you had people reach out to you being like, Hey, it's so cool to see you blow up. Um, I, like, especially if they were, especially if they were not so friendly uh, very recently, like, is there, you, you don't have to name names or you can, um, but is there anyone who like tried to get on your good side? Yeah, they have. And honestly, um, I, it's like, whatever, you know what I mean? I respond nicely. And then I just kind of like put it in my pocket and I'm just like, okay, I know. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really affect me. I think if they're trying to be nice, it's fine, but it, it is what it is. I mean, mm-hmm. I what where where it really does bug me is when people do start wanting things from you. And it's like, if, if people like reach out and they're like, love you. And then you talk with them for a little bit. And then they're like, you know, I would love to do this with you. I'm like, ah, 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 ah. we don't need to do this. Yeah. yeah. I, another thing, just one, another small thing. Like I've had that as well, but especially if it was someone like, hey, I'd love to collab with you on something. And then, and then they wouldn't have an idea. And then, yeah. and then they would say, and, they were, and I was like, okay, what's your idea? And they were like, oh, I just thought we could like come up with an idea to get, I was like, okay, so that if someone, even if it was someone trying to get on my good side and, but then they said, this is my idea. I have the script. I think you'd be perfect for it. Tell, like, tell me what you think. That I actually respect a little bit more because I know it's ultimately serving some sort some sort of an artistic vision instead of just trying to use like the audience that I've built. Yeah, like, oh, I thought I thought I would just tack on to your following for a yeah. second and add nothing in return. It's like, exactly. yeah, no, that sounds fair. What a good transaction for, I, I get nothing in return and I give you everything. That's awesome. No, it's the worst. Okay, so Gabby, shall we get into listener submissions? Let's Let's do it. Let's rock and roll. Okay, I um I have one pulled up. So, uh, I am one who has a plethora of phobias. However, there are two I believe to have a, cor- a correlation to one another. Wait, the can pho- I interrupt? Yes. Is this the queen right here? <laughs> <laughs> I have a plethora of phobias. <laughs> 
<laughs> Where's this bitch's monocle? Anyway, I'm afraid go on. of dying really soon. <laughs> Just <laughs> I don't want to nag our listeners. I am very sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You're very eloquent, whoever wrote this. If it's the queen, cool. Love you, Liz. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, plethora of phobias, two have a correlation to one another. The first is my fear of small fish. I'm fine with bigger fish like koi or any saltwater sea life. I love sharks, but small, tiny freshwater fish creep me out. I can go to aquariums, but not pet stores. The second fear is of tiny spiders. Now this one really weirds people out. I grew up with tarantulas and I love them, no issue, but tiny little spiders that show up randomly. I hate them, disgusting, keep them away from me. Tell me why people think I'm so weird. It just sounds like you have a size issue. A size queen. <laughs> it's just size queen? It's a size queen. <laughs> It's not the queen, it's the size queen. The size queen. Size oh queen, right. This is, I'm, I'm wondering if this is a fear of like, imagining like you're swimming and like a big fish, like a koi or a shark, you know that isn't going to like, try to swim up in your clothes or in your hair or something like that's gonna be big and that's gonna be, you won't lose sight of it. Where a tiny fish, you might lose sight of it and it might start nibbling at your elbow or something. You might, you might lose it. So and you so, might be worried yeah. it's in your orifice or something. Yeah, exactly. Right. I think that I honestly, too, I will agree about the freshwater fish. Like, I like seeing the big fish because you do know that they're there. But those freshwater fish will bite you. Mm. Interesting. They nibble. That I've gotten nibbled on. I've gotten nibbled on my little, my calves when I was in the, in the beach in Greece one time. Just nibble, nibble, nibble. And it hurt. It hurt <laughs> like a mother effer. And wow. so, you know what? This person's not weird. It's dangerous out there. I don't, and it's the same thing with like spiders. If it's like, if it's a big tarantula that just like, it can sit in your hand or in a tank that is just, it's big enough that you know it like can't crawl inside of you somehow. Like that is like, that's like, that's a way you can rationalize it and feel a little bit safer. I get, I kind of get that. Yeah, I do get it actually. I don't think it's that weird. Yeah, no. Yeah, I guess not. I know that uh, that beta fish are apparently really dangerous because you can't put them in a tank with each other or they'll eat each other. Did you say such... beta fish? Have you ever heard of this? It's a beta no. fish. It's, it's, like, there... it's like a kind of, uh, I was going to say- It's the house cuck fish. of fish. It's the, <laughs> it's the fish. They wear those ad agency glasses. They like listen to Neutral Milk Hotel. <laughs> Oh yeah exactly <laughs> but they're but really they're really vicious i think the smaller the thing the more it has to prove mm. right which is why i am so loud <laughs> yeah that's why you're fun size uh. <laughs> and effervescent i can put you in my pocket <laughs> but i'll bite you <laughs> Ooh. uh Got to get a saltwater gust instead of a freshwater one that doesn't nibble. Um. Um, well, in conclusion, this person, you are not weird. Yes. Um, you're just a size queen and good for you. Uh, yeah. th this person has a, a question. They're asking us advice. Okay, mm -hmm. so for background, I'm in high school and I'm, wait, in the grade above the person. Oh yeah, so okay, so so this writer, I read this. So the writer, um, th they um, asked out a person and this, person is a year below oh got it okay um i asked a dude out who was in the grade below me at 1 a.m as a spur of the moment thing i expected a no but he said yes i was supposed to plan the date but i have strict parents who said no so then i didn't talk to him for a while i explained the situation that we should get to know each other better and all he said was okay did I hurt his feelings? I know he was probably really disappointed. What What do I do? Please help me out. I need it. Oh. Aww. I would say, honestly, in this situation that like, it's really important to just um, actually not ghost people in this situation. Like just, yeah. It it's really difficult in this day and age to just text someone and be like, I am in a bad mood today or like whatever, but it, it really does help the whole situation and like in the future. I just think long term with people. And I'm like, if I just respond to them and I'm honest right now, they will understand that like every like that I'll be better in the future or like yeah. whatever. It, it just like communication just it's like so important. And it really Absolutely. like with texting, it just it goes away and it really should come back. Yeah. And that's also like a test for like that other like you could totally just say, 
Hey, I had every intention of like going out with you. I think you're awesome. But my parents, I, I wasn't expecting it, but they're really strict. They're not letting me go out. Can we work on something different like FaceTiming or getting to like, that is a totally valid thing to say. Mm -hmm. And if that dude is a cool person, he will understand. And if he's not, then he's, uh, then he's not to be messed with. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, but I also do think to like go to the other side of it, like this person shouldn't blame herself because yeah. it is the most natural thing in the world to have the biggest crush on someone, finally have something go right, and then have like this weird wrinkle thrown in the way that like possibly yeah. fucks the whole plan up. And then you're like freaking out. So yeah. I get why she ghosted but in the future it's like Gus said it is always better to communicate than not to communicate because at the end of the day they are your real feelings they are real to you so you can't judge them badly so why should anyone else judge them negative yeah. if that makes right. sense right it is also I think just a little bit like we are all all of us are much past high school and so it's it's a little bit easy for us to say because I think we've all had just like a little more experience with dating and rejection. We've built up skin and we know and a thick skin and we know like ultimately skin. like what yeah. we built skin. <laughs> for skin <laughs> for specifically. <laughs> We're all in a factory just making foreskin for people. Um, but um, but it's it, but like when you're a teenager, it like it's so high stakes and it's so nerve-wracking, and you want you want it to work out so much that you'll lie or or you'll leave stuff out you'll omit stuff and so it's it's kind of easy for us to say but like but but yeah all we can do is just say hey try to be yourself and try to be honest and be the most yourself you can be and if they like you or dislike you for who you are good ultimately you don't want to waste energy it is hard to admit. i will always say this like the, what i do is like when i don't want to send the email or cancel or reschedule or whatever or just be honest with somebody I always think that I just remind myself that the dread that I feel about sending this is so much greater than the feeling I'm going to have when I just send the text. Mm. Yeah. Because it's just going to be on my mind. I'll just be dreading it and be like, oh, I'm stressed about it. I'm stressed. It's annoying. I'm annoyed about it. Should I just, just, should I respond? Should I respond? But as soon as you send the text message, it's like a weight has been lifted off your shoulder every time because you're, you've done the work. And if they, if that person responds negatively, then that's on them. And that person doesn't really deserve to be in your life. So like, that's another thing, but chances are they'll just be like, oh yeah, I get it. Goodbye. I okay. Yeah, I totally, I, I get that. And on, an, and on another part of the submission, I also wonder if this person, it's different for every parent, but I do think if I had been, when I was 16, if I had like had a conversation with my parents and been like, hey, like, why, why don't you want me to date X person or Y person? Like, what is this thing that you're, ex what is this resistance you're giving me right now? Or like, uh, cause maybe they'll say something like, maybe they'll clarify why, like religious reasons. And then you can be like, well, I'm not religious. Um, and that is a conversation that you guys can have for like, uh, I don't know. I think, uh, as a teenager, it's really hard to communicate with your parents, but if you yeah. can, if they're not going to kick you out of the house or something, it's probably important. Hot Absolutely. take. Absolutely. Ultimately, of course, uh, to any kids out there, be as safe as you can be and do what you feel and do what you feel comfortable with. Right. Oh yeah. So uh, let's do another one. Where is it? God damn it. Where's the note? Okay, here it is. Okay. Uh, hi, mommy and daddy meerkat. That's us. That's uh, us. Woman sixteen. Uh, have had my armpit hair grown out for about a month now. The deodorant I used, uh, the, the deodorant I used to use when I shaved doesn't work. And right now I'm detoxifying or whatever my mom said, my armpits. If either of you have armpit hair, would you discuss how you smell fresh and not disgusting? One of my bras literally smells like an unwashed pussy. Um, I have very hairy armpits and... I think the advice I would give is um, Old Spice. Ooh. Is it the spray you, do you use or do you use the bottle? No, I use Old Spice deodorant and mm. I, use the, I use the endurance one because <laughs> I really <laughs> smell. Because you need to I, endure. I literally, 
I will, I'll, I'll like shower and then just sit in bed or I'll sit in the couch all day and write. And then after seven hours, I'll get up and my boyfriend will be like, you fucking smell what is going on. And I'm like, <laughs> I've done nothing but sit all day. I showered. So oh honestly, the, the best advice I can give you is just to find someone in your life that can put up with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good advice in general. Arm yeah. hair, no arm yeah. hair. <laughs> Just yeah no for real because it's a real thing and i fucking yeah. reek sometimes and i yeah. get it don't floss your teeth just get someone who doesn't mind the smell of unflossed teeth no, just no, like... floss, but still floss your teeth but and put the order in on but but get someone that'll put up with your little yeah <laughs> yeah uh, lucas do you have hairy armpits i do have i mean i've i have hair in my arm but i don't know if that they're especially hairy Mm. Um, I do have a very, I have a surprisingly hairy asshole though, which is not relevant, but, (laughs) (laughs) but (laughs) I don't know why, but it was in my heart and I just needed to say that. Why? Oh yeah. It's okay. I do too. And I'm sure Gabby does too. I got, I actually got it waxed recently. (laughs) Oh, I got my first Brazilian ever. It was crazy. I don't know if you guys oh have ever, God. well, I guess you haven't if your buttholes are, nope. ha- are hairy, but no. the the sides and the uh, top of like your coochie area are painful with the wax, but the butthole, surprisingly nice to be waxed. Whoa. Oh. Be shocked. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. I know a lot of gay guys that get their shit lasered and I have to say, like give me a break I don't want to do that no and they they, uh, one of them was telling me about it they were like oh yeah the first one it hurts and because it's a laser on your fucking asshole and they're like it hurts like they and there's levels of it they crank it up to a seven or whatever I'm like what and then but the second time your nerves die so you don't really feel it I'm like that is not nothing has convinced me nothing has convinced me but do you feel anything <laughs> like ever again <laughs> ever again it was too much i was like just just have a just have a hairy butthole you're fine it's good it's oh good for God. you it's like i lasered yeah. my hair off and now i can't come anymore my bra's oh my God. gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but to but to get back to the listener's submission so i do have hairy armpits um and i use a deodorant called herban cowboy i think it's called and I like the scent and it works well for me. And I, I try to avoid ones that have like aluminum in them. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little hesitant to use those ones. Um, for, I don't know. I was yes. like made afraid of them for a while and like more natural stuff I go for, but yeah, I use it and it smells really good. I've heard that it like is a good accompaniment for me, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I think just like experiment a little bit, like you can, it's very natural to like experiment with different, like sensor brands and see what works for you yeah and get yeah. someone who doesn't care <laughs> yep. most important thing. get someone who is who has anosmia just <laughs> uh okay we'll do two more here so someone said they have a weird phobia of pointy shoes and it all stems from a book called the witches by roald Dahl. they said i read it as a kid because it was labeled incorrectly in my opinion as a children's book Okay, I have a problem with this submission because the witches famously do not have pointy shoes. They have blunt shoes because they don't have toes. That's a very important plot point in identifying witches in the book. So this person is just kind of dumb. Um, <laughs> You're like, let's neg these listeners. So, they never so this person again. sucks. Moving on. Um, Next subject. Um, I. <sighs> Well, There's actually, no- I don't like pointed shoes either. They're a little, like, just, just too pointy. No. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, no. I don't have a phobia of them. I just think they're ugly. They're <laughs> yeah. ugly. They're ugly. I have like a, a phobia of hideousness. <laughs> like, a, like a male dress shoe that's, like, too pointy, I think is gross on a suit. It looks awful. Get a rounded shoe. It's better. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But is it, like, I wonder if this person, like, when they see pointed shoes, they, like, freak out. Like, how severe is this phobia? Yeah. I'm wondering, yeah, is it, I have to be, I have to not be in the same room as them or is it just, I don't like them? Like I heard about a woman, like a born again Christian woman who said she had a porn addiction, but then my friend pointed out, is it like, does she think an addiction is just like watching it once and liking it? So is it like, (laughs) I guess that's unrelated. I don't know. (laughs) It's like the asshole thing. We're going off kilter here. Katy Perry has an addiction to kissing girls. Um. (laughs) 
the taste of their cherry chapstick. She can't get enough. She eats chapstick by the tube now. Oh, we're going to get flagged by copyright. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have no idea what else to say to this person other than that I, I don't like their takeaway phobia. I don't. Well, Lucas, I think they're valid. So we're going to disagree on this one. Agree to disagree. It's our first fight. <laughs> Agree to disagree. Um, so Mom, on Dad, a- don't fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay who's, ki- for- who's keeping gus <laughs> we need custody battle right now <laughs> look at that little face i'm gonna litigate um and so for our last one gabby Lucas I think doesn't th- want me <laughs> <laughs> oh god i'm all yours gabby <laughs> i never wanted you in the first place full oh. custody now you'll hang out in my pocket all day <laughs> it's disgusting in there you better like it <laughs> You better like listening to Lady Gaga and eating feta cheese. <laughs> That's all I do all day. <laughs> my farts are deadly. <laughs> You'll smell oh, them from the pocket. Oh, I will. Your I'll farts... be in the back pocket. Great. <laughs> Your farts smell the way Lady Gaga sounds. That would be kind of nice, actually. That would be nice. That, I was like, what is, are you, I was like, are you insulting Yeah, Lady Gaga? are you insulting our girl Gaga? I was like, I will come through the screen right now. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, you've got two Gaga stands here. You can't. This yeah. is why I'm getting the custody. Oh no, I love, I love uh, Germanata all the way. Um, but uh, okay, so for our last one, uh, Gabby, should we have a little bit of uh, backstory? Just a little bit, a little refresher. Yeah, um, la- last week I told a story about when I went to the hospital because I accidentally swallowed the uh, tab off of a soda can because I was drinking it too fast. I like put it in the uh, soda by mistake, and I just like it. I swallowed. Oh, it. oh like. Oh, the thing that were you supposed to A, B, C, D, E? Yeah, like the little, I was, I was doing the thing, playing with it. It fell in. I was like, it's fine. I'm sure I won't swallow it. Of course I've swallowed it. (laughs) And then I went to the hospital and they gave me a pregnancy test, even though I was like, it would be a modern miracle. At that (laughs) point in my life, I don't think I'd had sex in like a long time. So I was like, I, I, or, or if I had, it was obviously with a woman because I haven't slept with a man in like seven years or something. Uh, so I was like, it would be a modern miracle if I was pregnant. And they were like, we insist you have to take this pregnancy test before we do an x-ray on you. Right. So That's weird because that in. happened to me last time I was at the doctor too. But you actually were pregnant. That's the, that's oh, the twist. No. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Anyway, so, um, so th- someone wrote in to say, Gabby, my sweet summer child. I will fight re- them. Re the soda tab. The hospital gave you a pregnancy test because they were going to do x-rays. Any person with a uterus in childbearing years has to do that. It's because you calling the ra- me old bitch? You calling yeah. me old? Childbearing years? Babe, I am 27. I have my whole life ahead of me. Yeah, but I think I think they I think childbearing years and like this is gonna be gross is 13 to like 49, yeah, which like- is insane. Yeah any woman in childbearing years okay i'll take yeah. it i'll take it I'll, you're I'll in wait your for prime this. it's all weird. downhill from here i'll wait for this bitch to say something else inflammatory and then i'll pop off. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the person says any person with a uterus in childbearing years has to do that it's because the radiation can harm a fetus so they have to be 100 percent sure they don't take your word that they can't take your word for it um they didn't think you swallowed a, sw- a soda tab to have an abortion Love your podcast. Have to submit something funny one day, but had to clarify. That would be so funny if I like you know, pretended to swallow a soda tab. I was like, I want a free abortion. I guess they're all free. <laughs> oh, what a! I was thing actually going to American... say the same thing after oh. seventeen. After seventeen seasons of Grey's Anatomy, I was like, they probably need to do a pregnancy test, like by protocol, because you have something in your belly. Yeah, you must have. Oh. It, when you watch enough of that show, you're like anything's possible. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's like a protocol thing. So that's yeah. I was gonna say the same thing, but um, but this asshole listener beat me to it. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so Gus, we come towards the end of our podcast, and something we do at the end. Uh, do not be scared. It's called Self Perception Corner. We uh, we would like you to say how you think you are perceived by other people, and then we tell you how we actually perceive you. I hate that. (laughs) Well, it's been a great episode. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Yeah, okay, here we go. I think, okay, honestly, my, I think that people think I'm too loud and can be annoying. And I think that 
Um, I think that some people in the in the comedy community might feel that um, I'm not that funny. That's that is how I I really do. But me, I probably because I'm I, like I don't know. I'm probably talking about like specific people that I think hate me. Um, that I will probably name accidentally. Um, <laughs> Um, I think, but no, I think definitely the first two things are true. And I think that, that people definitely, um, do view me as like being the life of the party amongst my friend group, not in the comedy world. Okay. I, uh, we'll, we'll say our part after, but I want to ask, like, how do you reconcile you feeling that way that like, maybe people think that about you with c- continuing to create content and putting you know, yourself out there? It's because I don't fucking care because Mm -hmm. it's like, I've already proven myself again and again at this point. So it's like, why should I listen to the negative thought when the reality is right in front of me? Do you know what I mean? Yes. So it's like, you know, it's like, if you don't find Greek mom funny, that's good, good for you because X amount of people do actually, and it actually, and it's actually really helpful to them because they relate to it and they find like a great thing about it. Um, and so that's how it's just because it's like, yeah, the negative thought is never as bad as the reality in front of you. That's beautiful. That is I wonderful. Completely agree. Yeah, that's very healthy. Gabby, do you want to go first? Sure. Yeah, I I perceive you definitely as like um, uh, someone like very energetic. For sure. I feel like when I first saw you, it must have been on stage. And I was like, this guy knows how to work a room. Like, I feel oh, like thank you, you. you are so intensely connected to the audience. Like, uh, I feel like some comics like rest on their material a little and they don't engage. And you're just like, here, boom, 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 boom. I'm going to try and like engage everyone in this room. And like coming up in comedy, being relatively new to it, that was really awesome for me to see. Because I was like, that's what I aspire to do at some point. Oh, um, thank you. And then in terms of your personality, I mean, I just see you as like ambitious and um, probably very like thoughtful to the people in your life. And also just like, yeah, like you don't give a fuck, like willing to put yourself out there. It's definitely loud, but I'm loud too. So fuck it. I am <laughs> and, very loud. Um, and a real New Yorker. <laughs> well, I, oh yeah. I'm so glad you do it. perceive me as a real New Yorker because sometimes I feel like people might be like, this guy's not really from New York. And I'm like, no, I am. I'm from Brooklyn. I get very heated about it. Yeah. You are more New York than I am. And I've never lived anywhere else. So. Oh, likewise. I've also, yeah. besides college, I've never lived anywhere besides Brooklyn either. And you're way more Brooklyn than me. Way more. Yeah. It's be, it's mostly because my brothers are like, have very thick Brooklyn. My brothers are like, my one brother's a car mechanic and the other one's like a, a bodybuilder and they're both like, they talk like this. They really do. It's like wow. very, very bro Yeah. That's awesome. I want to meet them at some point. Yeah. Okay. And for me, what I would say is that you're, you have the most welcoming aggression I've ever seen. Oh, that's such a good way to put it. That is the best way I can describe it is that I feel like you're someone who is like, <laughs> made self-discoveries, who loves themselves or is at least really trying hard to love yourself. And you are so aggressive at wanting other people to feel and go for things in the same way that you have. And it's a very, it's a very energizing vibe to be around. Yeah. And it's, oh, thank you. That's, and that's like ditto to everything that Gabby said, but that's, I, but that's what I thought is like a very, very welcoming, warm, aggression that you give out and inspire in other people that's the thing you're like i could kill you but i Mm -hmm. mean i want you to be a murderer with me just like (laughs) right (laughs) yeah right well it's because i really don't like energy sucks in my life like i really just try to keep them out of my life and there's a, a lot of people like that in comedy where you're like you're so insecure and focused on yourself that like it's taking away from the actual talent that you have. And so you need to learn how to stop, one, doing that to yourself and two, doing that to other people because no one's gonna wanna be around you if you're like that and the other, and, and you're not gonna break through what makes you special if you don't get out of that. And so that's why I'm so aggressive about it. I'm like, you know what makes you good, just be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's I also annoying, beautiful. it's so cloying when people are like, oh, I'm in, like, shut up, just do the thing. <laughs> Do the thing. I know people, and then I'm sure I'm. Sh- I'm sorry to excuse you again, Gabby. But- <laughs> I'm starting so to sorry, think but- this is a man thing. <laughs> no, but- no, could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> 
but Lucas with content, you know, people reach out and they're like, oh, you know, what's your advice? And I'm like, the advice is just to film yourself and put it out there. The, the thing yeah. is, you're, you're not asking me how to do content. You're asking me to tell you that you're good enough at doing content and Ooh. you know mm. that you are, you know that you are, and you're just not letting yourself believe that you are. Yeah. That is such a good point. I think it's a great note to end on. Yes, absolutely. And Gus, please, uh, well, first off, thank you so much for coming on this episode of our podcast. It was so good. It was so educational. It was, it was fantastic. Please plug and promote anything you like. Sure. I'm going to be in Arizona next week, uh, opening for Lisa Lampanelli if you're in Phoenix and, um, you can follow me at constantly Gus on TikTok and Instagram. Perfect. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much again. And to everyone else listening, uh, please go to our link tree, which you will find in our Instagram at Two Nosy Meerkats to send us some more submissions. We'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, uh, we will see you next time. <laughs>